No, the eyes have it. The question now is that vote housing stand part of the schedule. I call Dennis O'Rourke. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <clears throat> the National Government's uh, housing policy, I think, is a mess. And housing, New Zealand, housing in New Zealand is in deep crisis. There are severe housing shortages, especially in Auckland and Christchurch, and home buyers, especially first home buyers, can't afford to buy our house. In a home-owning democracy, which New Zealand has always been, this is a national disgrace. In Auckland, there's a need for at least 10,000 new houses per year, probably 12,000. There is already a housing deficit there of well over 30,000 houses and growing. And under the government's plans, there's a probability of no more than 10,000 new houses per year. So on that basis, the government's plan will never catch up. The government's plan's obviously a failure. But the worst is that young people seeking a first home will not be assisted by this government to get a home of their own under its too little, too late policies. To make matters worse, it is highly likely the Reserve Bank will shortly limit the quantum of high loan-to-value ratio mortgages that the trading banks can make. High LVR loans would typically cover 80% or more of the total property value. The Reserve Bank seems to be arguing that the purpose of this is to improve overall financial stability. The higher borrower borrowers are leveraged, the greater the risk that a property downturn could trigger a major economic meltdown echoing the subprime mortgage uh, crisis that generated the global financial crisis. So the Reserve Bank wants to restrict high LVR mortgages to avert the dangers of risky lending. But I think this is a, a flawed policy. Firstly, it's a second best strategy. Normally the Reserve Bank would raise interest rates, but it can't do that without raising an already overvalued dollar and inflicting all sorts of damage on the economy. Secondly, it won't actually work in practice because people can resort to all sorts of subterfuge to circumvent this restriction by shuffling money around. This has all, of course, happened before. Thirdly, the Reserve Bank's housing policy is Auckland-centric. Christchurch and elsewhere in New Zealand face different issues, and the results are therefore likely to be patchy and inappropriate for much of New Zealand. Fourthly, it will do nothing to deter property investors and speculators who have been buying up Auckland property and who have also ample equity. Fifthly, it does nothing about the migrant flows which have been concentrated in Auckland. It does nothing to tighten immigration policy in areas such as parental reunion, which have added significantly to housing demand in Auckland by, we think, something like 10 per cent, and that's a significant portion. Lastly, and most importantly, its impact will fall most directly on first home buyers. It's not the first home buyers who are, who are driving this bubble, but they will be the most heavily penalised sector by limits on LVR lending. Perversely, the policy may encourage them to seek the extra equity they will now need from potentially risky sources, such as finance companies, and this would, of course, add even more financial risk to the system. Mr Chairman, we in New Zealand first think the government's policies are overall to blame. It has acted far too late. Over the last four years, the government has allowed a housing price bubble to emerge in Auckland by its inept immigration and housing policies. Only a comprehensive housing strategy designed to address both demand and supply factors, as advocated by New Zealand First, will make housing affordable for first home buyers. New Zealand First supports a broadly based housing policy that will make home ownership a reality again rather than a dream for working New Zealanders. New Zealand First's policy to assist first home seekers is to establish a new state agency to acquire land, to create a land bank in areas where demand clearly exceeds supply, and that of course is currently Auckland and Christchurch. The agency would sell residential sections of a modest size on the basis of long-term agreements for sale and purchase up to 25 years to first home buyers. This reduces the upfront capital cost of a new home by, we think, something like a third. Interest rates would be highly concessionary at 2% for initial period of at least three years. Purchasers would build their own homes using normal bank financing would have title to the section transferred to them with the amount owing to the agency 
secured by way of a second priority land charge. Mr Chairman, the government's special housing areas are not enough, especially for first home buyers. I call up Holly Walker. Yeah, well, there can be no doubt that we're experiencing a housing crisis in New Zealand at the moment.